Hello, uh, my name's Louis, and I'm here to show you my app called Lime. So uh, we've just actually finished the design stage um, sort of this week, in fact, so just sort of got the clickable wireframes together, um, moving slowly into, well, quickly into development, just working on some feedback and um, hopefully get the app built quite quickly. Um, so Lime essentially is a health and fitness app that helps people that are new to a particular pursuit. It was born really out of my own problem of, um, I don't need that, okay, <laughs> of uh, getting into yoga. So started out brand new, didn't know where to go for content, didn't know who to listen to. And essentially I found myself building my own learning path from scratch, despite really being the least qualified person to do so. So um, I'll click into the, uh, into the app here. So you can log in through Facebook or um, create an account. Got the Lime tour that sort of shows all the users the different features. Um, the first four verticals we're starting with are yoga, meditation, sort of exercise, workouts, and also nutrition. Uh, the idea is that you can find the content that's right for you very quickly and easily. So building on that, I'll click on yoga and subtopics come down. So if I'm interested, for example, in baby yoga, I can quickly jump to that, that content that's relevant for me. So because we're a platform for other authors and content creators um, to host their own videos and make sort of engaging challenges, there's a preview, um, sort of be an image or a short video on that particular um, author, or essentially sort of a coach. Um, there'll be a brief description, and really it's their chance to sort of sell themselves and explain why the challenge is right for you, what, what you're gonna get out of it, and, um, and what sort of, sort of journey you're gonna go on with them. So I'll start the challenge. We've got um, very much sort of taken from sort of headspace where it's a, it's an actual learning path. It's not just a series of videos that have been you know, slapped onto YouTube. It's more of like a curated journey where you do day one, you unlock day two, you, you find yourself going on this journey. So I'll click on day three there after I've, I've unlocked day two. That brings up the video, which um, I'll show you an example of uh, in a minute. So I complete the video and then I have this progress. Now this is the sort of gamification element of the app. We've got a cup here of water, and the whole idea is that every video you watch, every challenge you complete, every time you share your progress, this cup of water is increasing. And it's just a simple metric, really, for people, you know, if they haven't used the app in a week, they can just come back to it, they'll be like, right, I was on 28% a couple of weeks ago, I'm, 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 I'm progressing, and it gives them that sort of sense of achievement. Uh, I can go to my profile, and really we, want, we wanted to create a dashboard where you can easily see, you know, what progress you've made, how far you're coming along, You've got, the, um, you've got the cup of water there. You've got a seven day streak, um, weekly usage, very much features taken from different sort of fitness apps that are quite popular. Here we've got, as part of the dashboard, you can see which challenges you're doing simultaneously. So if you're doing yoga, you might want to do meditation and nutrition, they all sort of merge into one. Um, and you can just pick up on whichever one you've done. So you can be like, right, I'll, I'll, I'll go and finish off my um, beginner's meditation class. And you can also see different challenges you've completed in the past. Um, I'll just show you the type of content we've got on the app at the moment. Uh, I'll just play a couple of minutes of this and it should give you an idea of, of what kind of content creators we've got on board. Hi everybody. A lot of people have asked me how I went to yoga and whether I thought that they could do yoga as well. So what I'm going to do every day over the next seven days, I'm going to post a different video on how to do a particular beginner's pose and uh, how you should get into it and how you should feel when you're in it, just to show you. The yoga is for everybody and it's not about being the most flexible or the strongest because your flexibility and strength definitely grows the more you do yoga. So I'm starting off with downward dog because this is probably the pose that I struggled with the most when I first started learning. Um, it's quite difficult if you don't know what you're doing. You can feel a lot of pressure on a lot of joints and you think, well how can we be staying here for sort of five, six breaths and not be sweating and yet I'm here and my arms are collapsing and my legs are hurting. So I'm going to show you first of all what a beginner would look like in the pose uh, and then where you should relax into after you've been practicing for a little bit and then I'm going to show you how to go through the leg down as well. So the thing about yoga is some days you may feel really strong, really flexible and you may be able to hold a pose really well and the next day, even though nothing has actually changed, you might not be able to lift your legs high or maybe you can't get into the pose quite easily that happens. The, the best thing is not to feel down on yourself. Cool. So just to give you an idea, really, um, she's got her own sort of seven day yoga challenge. And really it's about, you know, if we've, one of the challenges we faced, we've got a lot of people that on Instagram, some people on YouTube, sort of very much amateurs that have got good content, that are trying to take their own first steps in building their own personal brand. 
And one of the challenges we faced is getting those people to take the step up from Instagram, where they're just sort of taking a photo or a 10 second video, to actually creating more of a structured learning path. Um, so Charlotte's one of the sort of better videos we've got, but we, we've had sort of 10, 20 other people, and unfortunately the quality hasn't sort of quite got to where we want it to be. Um, and that's the app in a nutshell. So just looking for feedback on content, um, if this is a particular format that people would find engaging, if you're a beginner and you want to take those steps into yoga, would, would this work for you? Um, and, and that's it really, yeah. Any, any feedback would be welcome. Thank you. Sorry, Joe was sitting on my mic. Oh, I think Andrew might have a question. Did you have any specific feedback that you wanted to ask for? So, yeah, just on terms of content breadth, um, in terms of the format, and any ideas, really, of how to, uh, how to get good content. Fab, coming over. Are you going to mention your injury that you got from yoga? I think it's an awesome app. Uh, great, yeah, great stuff. Uh, Thank you. I'm potentially an ideal uh, user of the of your services I, I use headspace quite a lot mm -hmm. i also use uh fit start yoga every day now um so i can see the sort of uh mix that you've got going on there right. also there's a little bit of uh udemy as well where amateur creators can create yeah. videos and sort of upload them um yeah so my thing is there's still a few things wrong with fit start. it's a bit slow you can't uh create your own content that easily mm -hmm. um so yeah, if you can make it just ridiculously fast and tailor courses for what you want each day, then I think it's yeah, great. Awesome. Okay. Phil, thank you. Thank you me. Uh, oh, sorry about this, but I want to challenge your idea. Mm -hmm. How sensible is it to get amateur yoga people yep. to teach potentially damaging things yep. in private on a phone? Mm -hmm. Um, I suppose you just need to be able to trust, really, in the content. I suppose it's in no one's... You may not know better what is a damaging thing, what's not. Mm -hmm. They tell you it's going to hurt, but what yep. if you're really hurting yourself? Mm -hmm. um, I suppose you just need a disclaimer, really. People need to listen to their own bodies and, you know, what, what might work for one instructor won't work for everyone. But I'm sure there's no... You know, it's a platform where people want to build their own brand and as an author, so they're not going to go out there and, you know, put on bad content or anything like that. If it is amateurs, a risk, they yeah, may I not agree. Know better. Sorry? They may not know better no, if no. they're only amateurs and setting out themselves. Mm -hmm. so. It's already happening on YouTube and everyone else, so it's not the point to do it. But this concentrates it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree it's a risk, but I don't think there's a, a real way to control it, to be honest. Anyone else? Thank I think to help mitigate the risk that was just described there, um, and also to um, develop from an online learning path, um, it's a bit one directional. So mm -hmm. uh, a lot of a lot of younger folks are used to watching YouTube videos to learn stuff. But if you look at really good online training on university courses, a lot of it's about the backwards and forwards. So I've done something, show it to someone, put it up on a forum, have a Q and A forum to ask questions, maybe show a picture of my pose to a teacher and get some feedback on that. Yeah. So that sort of interactivity, I think, is where the internet is awesome for doing stuff, and I think that would really lift it from being a one-directional app into being. Um, Dealing with different learning styles, you know, four or five different learning styles that people like to do, mm -hmm. making mistakes, watching by example and so on. So handling those I think will help uh, it a fair bit so people get used to what videos they like and perhaps that will help you recommend other relevant content sure. to those users. Um, but yeah, I, I see some good nuggets there. Mm -hmm. uh, if you just really look at that, that university education angle, look at how people want to learn stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, one idea we had was actually for user-generated learning paths. So if someone likes you know, a particular video of Charlotte's and they like a particular video of someone else, they can then create their own, say, seven-part learning path and then share that with their friends. So it's not quite sort of feedback and you know, someone's watching a video, they show them how they're doing it, but it's a way of making sure the right content sort of rises to the top. I think, the, I think there's a fine line between the right content and good training, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and people who are used to delivering yoga classes in churches around in, in suburban areas, know what it's like to coach someone through 10 weeks and take them through that, that journey. And I right. think helping exude some of that knowledge and coaching would, would make more of a difference for me than having my mate tell me that this one worked for them. Okay. 
So you mean the author, so the content creator would be a bit more involved throughout whilst people are doing that, they'd yeah, yeah. be giving them tips and... Until you hit big scale, that could be a really nice way to build a really good community around it. Any other questions? Feedback? Anyone? I've got a few more minutes. No? Do we all want a cup of tea? Okay, in which case, can we have a big round of applause? Brilliant. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah.